Hello, welcome back. In the last class, we studied prefix code, which is a subset of a uniquely decodable code. We also saw that prefix code and uniquely decodable codes, they satisfy what is known as Kraft Macmillan inequality. So, the inequality is as follows, correct? And what it says basically that all uniquely decodable codes should satisfy this inequality. And this is a necessary and sufficient condition. So, what it means that if I have a prefix or uniquely decodable code, then this condition will be satisfied. And if this condition is satisfied, then it is possible for me to generate a uniquely decodable code or prefix code. Now, it is important to stress that this inequality is on the length of the code. So, let us take I have a source with three symbols and I have two codes which I have shown here. Now, both these codes satisfy the length condition. If I evaluate this, I get this equal to 1. So, this condition is satisfied, but we know that code 1 is unacceptable, whereas code 2 is acceptable for the same lengths of the code words. So, this condition only tells you that their code exists, but does not specify the procedure to design such codes. Uh, we also studied a strategy for choosing the lengths of the code words for a prefix code and that is summarized in the slide here. So, what we said that given a source with the probabilities associated with the symbols of the source, we said that if p i the probability of a symbol is of this form half raised to a constant where alpha i is an integer, then I can choose my l i's equal to alpha i's which will be equal to log to the base 2 of 1 by p i. And we showed that for such a case, the average length of the code turns out to be the entropy of the source and the efficiency turns out to be 1. But for the case where the condition is not satisfied, where you do not have of this form where alpha is are integers, then we said that we could choose the lengths of the code words given by this inequality. And we showed that if we use this inequality using this lower bound, Kraft Macmillan inequality gets satisfied. So, what it is means that I should be able to design a prefix code and for that prefix code I will get this result. So, what it says that, that the average length of the code cannot be smaller than the entropy of the source and using this strategy we can get the average of length of the code in Bennett's within one Bennett of the entropy of a discrete memoryless source. Now, this strategy may not be very good specifically when the entropy of a source is a low value. We will see this little later on, but if you want to improve this coding efficiency, another way would be to extend it to coding of nth extension of the source. So, let us extend this strategy of choosing the lengths of the codes given by this inequality to the nth extension 
of the source. And if we do that, then we should get this result. where ln bar represents the average length of the code words corresponding to the symbols from the nth extension of the source s. So, if you assume a source is discrete memoryless source then I can write this quantity as n times h s. and then by dividing by n on all the sides I get this inequality. Now, I can this quantity is nothing but the average length in minutes required to code the original source symbol correct. Therefore, I can write this as as follows. So, what this result tells us that for source encoding we can make the average number of Bennett's per source symbol as small as, but not smaller than the entropy of the source and the for given n the result also tells us that the average length will be not greater than the right side of this equation. So, you will have the average length within 1 by n Bennett of the entropy of the source. So, by increasing n we can get the value of L average to be as close as possible to H s that is the entropy of the source, but the price we pay for this is that the coding complexity will increase because of large number of symbols which you will have in the nth extension of the source. It is also important to know that this strategy of choosing the length for the code word uh, does not tell us what is the value of this L average correct. And another thing is that it does not guarantee that I uh, if I choose my code word lens as per this strategy, then the code which I will get will have the average length which is the minimum correct. So, I will let us take a simple example which will serve to show that this choice may indeed provide a poor way to choose the code word lens. There is an example out here I have a three source symbols and for three source symbols the probabilities have been specified. So, I can calculate log to 1 by p i and I get this quantity and then using this strategy I choose my lens to be 1 3 4 and then you can show that I can generate a code which satisfies this length condition. Okay? So, I get this code. So, I have used this strategy. Now, if you calculate the length for this code A you will come out it will turn out to be 1.78 Bennett's per symbol and the entropy of the source turns out to be 1.22 bits. So, this basically strategy does satisfy this relationship between the average length and the entropy of the source. So, that is fine correct, but we know that we can design another code which is more efficient than this and that code basically is given by code B. Now, if you take code B and if you calculate the length for this it turns out to be 1.33 Bennett's per symbol. So, what it means basically 
the average length which I got using the code B is a considerable improvement over the average length which I could get using the code A and the code A was constructed using this inequality or this strategy which we had discussed earlier. Correct? So, I just want to say that that this strategy need not provide the best code word lens or the code average code length which is minimum. Okay? And what this strategy also this code B also shows that there is little to be gained by encoding the second or higher extension of a source because best we can hope is 1.22 minutes per symbol and using the code B we have already achieved 1.33 minutes per symbol. So, from the results of our study we can conclude that if you want to improve the efficiency of source encoding then it is better to carry out the coding in terms of n symbols of a source and by increasing the value of n the efficiency can be increased, but at the expense of coding complexity. Now, the question is that given a fixed n is it possible for me to find a source code or design a source code or construct a source code such that the average length of that source code will be minimum. So, we will define what is a compact code. A compact code for a source S is a source code which has the smallest average length possible if we encode the symbols from S one at a time. And one algorithm to get this compact code is Huffman coding. So, without going into the formal proof of proving that Huffman code is a compact code, we will show the construction of a Huffman code for a given source with the help of an example. So, I have a source consisting of 6 symbols and the probabilities I have also been shown here in the second column. So, the first step of Huffman coding is to order the symbols of the source S in decreasing order of probabilities. The next step is basically combine the two symbols with the lowest probability into one symbol with probability equal to the sum of the probabilities of the symbols being combined and obtain a new source from S containing only k minus 1 symbols in this case 5 symbols. We refer to this new source as a reduction of S and we call it as S1. Now, the symbols of this reduction of S may be reordered and again we may combine the two list probable symbols to form a reduction of this reduction of S. So, we get S 2 from S 1 which is reduction of reduction of S. So, by proceeding in this manner we construct a sequence of sources each containing one symbol fewer than the previous one until we arrive at a source with only two symbols. So, at this stage we find the code word for the S4 and the code words for this S4 symbols are just 0 and 1. Once we have this code words we proceed to the preceding source and construct the code words for the symbols in that source and that is done as follows 0 0.4 this symbol is also same as the symbol here in S 3. So, the code word for this will be identical to the code word which we have in S 4. So, this will be equal to 1. Now, to 
determine the code words for these two symbols in S3, we take the code word from S4 that is 0 and to that we add 0 and 1 arbitrarily. So, this becomes 0 0 and this will become 0 1. Then come to S2, this was 1, so this will remain 1, this is same as this. So, this was basically 0 0, so this will be 0 0 and as far as the code words for this and this is concerned, the code word for this was 0 1. So, we take that code word 0 1 and to that we add 0, so 0 1 0, 0 1 1. So, this is the way we proceed till we come at the first column here and we get the code words for the source symbols and this is the code word which are given here. Now, notice that when we are assigning this 0 and 1, here also 0, 1, 0, 1, this is a bit arbitrary. I could have assigned this 1 and 0. Here also I could have done 1 and 0, correct? So, and if I do that and if I generate the code words for that kind of assignment, obviously the code words would be different, but the code word length will remain the same. And average length of that code will be the same as the average length of this code, correct? And uh, what I said this arbitrary assignment of 0 and 1 can be also achieved by just flipping a particular position in all the code words of this code. So, if I take this say let us take a second position and if I flip this position in all the code words. So, this becomes 1, this becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, I will get a new set of code words. That means, I will get a new source code, but again the length will be the same. So, these are the trivial differences you get, but there is a, an important difference which occurs in this example is as follows. If you take this, this combination, we get 0 1 probability. Now, this probability is same as the probability of other two symbols here, correct? And I have left this symbol right at the below. What I could have done? I could have taken it at the top. So, if you follow that strategy and generate the code using the Huffman coding principle for the same source, I would get the code as follows. So, I combine this and the combined one I take it as high as possible. So, I take it here and the other two basically I put it below. Then again I combine this I get 0 0.2. When I combine this I get 0 0.3 which is the same as this 0 0.3, but I take it as high as possible and I put it in the top correct. And then I reach the last reduction where there are only two symbols and then do the assignments of the, uh, the zeros and ones at these branches of bifurcations, correct? And then you get the code word by tra traversing from backward. So, from here you move, you can get the code word for S5. And now, if you see basically the code word lengths are different, correct? So, if you do adopt this principle basically and calculate the average length, you will find the average length turns out to be exactly the same as the earlier one. But there is a difference is that, that if you calculate the variance of the code words in this code by this formula, you will find that variance will be lower than the variance which we will obtain in the earlier case. And in a practical scenarios, having a code of a lower variance is always better because it avoids the chances of buffer overflow. I would like to note one more observation in the construction of Huffman code and that is that once you have 
a reduction where you can construct a compact code then it is not necessary for me to have further reductions because once i can generate the code word or compact code for that reduction then i can generate the compact code for the pre uh, preceding reduction take a simple example as shown here if i have a source consisting of five symbols and the probabilities are given as shown here now if you arrange them in the decreasing order of probability this is what i get correct and now if you take this order and if you combine this using huffman code if i combine this to what i'll get is 0.125 and now if you look at the source symbol probabilities in this reduced source s1 this are of the form 1 by 2 raised to an integer so we know that for this kind of probabilities we can easily generate the compact code and for that the compact code is as shown here correct so now once i have a compact code for this reduction i need not proceed ahead for further reduction i can go backwards so what i can do is basically i can generate the code words for my source s now this is 0 this is 0 so this will remain 0 this is 1 0 this will still remain 1 0 this is same so this is 1 1 0 and for this basically we'll use the huffman coding algorithm i have the code word 1 1 1 1 and when i come here i split it 1 1 1 1 and add 0 to this and add 1 to this so i get the code for this given here in just one reduction so in this class we have studied huffman coding and we'll continue the discussion on this in the next class thank you